tutorial is for those of you who have taken the Microsoft Excel 2007 basic workshop here at Hack. In this tutorial, I'm going to go through the independent practice activities at the end of Unit 1 and Unit 2 in your textbook. First one is located on page 1-19, and there's a seven-step practice activity on the bottom of that page. And the first step uh, says to start Excel. I've already done that. Step number two says to open the file called Practice Employee Details located in the Unit 1 folder. So to open a file in Microsoft Excel 2007, I'm going to come up to the upper left-hand corner of the interface, click on Office button, and I'm going to choose Open. Now on your home computer or work computer, navigate to your student data folder. We're going to open up Unit 1, and there's a file in here called Practice Employee Details. That's the one we want. Step number three says activate cell B30. So essentially what they're trying to do in this practice activity is to remind you how to navigate and move from cell to cell within Microsoft Excel worksheets. So in class, we learned how to use the mouse, we learned how to use the keyboard and the arrow keys uh, and various navigation techniques. So step number three says activate cell B30. So what I need to do is find column B, find row 30, find where they intersect, and click. So that's how you activate a specific cell within Microsoft Excel worksheets. And do keep in mind that when you're referring to a cell reference, it's called out by the column letter followed by the row number. So in this case, it's B30, not 30B. All right, step number four says use the help interface to get information on opening a file. Well, you can use the help interface to get help on most things Excel related, but where is the help interface located within Office 2007? It's in the upper right-hand corner of the application window, very close to the window controllers. You're going to see a little blue circle with a question mark. That activates your help. I'm going to click on that. little dialog box comes up. Suggestion that I have is to check in the lower right-hand corner that dialog box. Make sure you are connected to Office Online. If not, click it and choose Show Content from Office Online. That's going to give you more up-to-date responses uh, from the Microsoft Excel Help interface. So, uh, I can search here to get help from Office Online directly, or I can search up here to kind of get a hybrid of help from local and online resources. So I'm up here at the top. I'm going to search for how to open an Excel file, and then I'm going to click on search. And you can see my search results coming up all kinds of things related to opening different types of files within Excel and so on. So the idea is that if one of these titles in the help results appeals to you, you click on it, brings up that help. Oftentimes Microsoft will cross-reference out to their website or cross-reference you over to other help topics that are related. And of course there'll be a step-by-step -step, um, instruction set on how to carry out the information that you were seeking help on. I'm going to go ahead and close that down, return back to the Microsoft Excel worksheet. Looking at step number 5 on page 1-19, it says use the Find and Select tool to navigate to cell F23, then return back to cell A1. What they're referring to here is located on the Home tab of your ribbon, very last group to the far, far right, the editing group. You're going to see a button. It's a multifunction button called Find and Select. I'm going to activate and click on that. What they're showing you here in step number five is the idea of using Go To. So if you use a workbook enough, you'll start to know within the worksheets where various information is located. And this is one of the quickest ways to go someplace specific. So we're going to go to cell F23, just typing in the reference at the bottom of the dialog box. Click OK. You'll see it, it moved my active cell over there to F23. Going back up to Find and Select, going to go back into Go To. Now I'm going to tell it to go to cell A number 1. Click OK. Now I'm back in cell A1. Step number six says close practice employee details. I can close a file in Excel in one of two ways. I can use the lower X in the upper right hand corner. Remember that lower set of window controllers controls the active file that you're working with. Another way for me to close the file is to go to Office button and choose Close. Now, I didn't make any changes to that file. We just navigated around it a little bit, so there was no prompting by Microsoft Excel. But had we made changes in that file, it would have stopped and said, do you want to save the changes prior to closing?
Now moving right along to the practice exercise at the end of Unit 2. This is located on page 2-24 of your workbook. This is an 8-step practice activity. This one you may need to pause to kind of play catch up. I have to go through this rather quickly because there's a limited length that my tutorials can be um, on YouTube. So I'm going to move rather quickly here. You may have to pause and kind of play catch up. But what they want us to do on page 2-24 is to create a new workbook. So I'm going to go to Office button and choose New. Blank workbook is already selected. So I can either double click this choice or I can come down to the lower right hand corner and choose Create. I am going to use the zoom in the lower right hand control, uh, lower right hand area of the status bar to control the uh, view here and bring myself in a little bit so you guys can see this better. I'm going to click into uh, A4 because step number two of the book says enter data beginning in row four as shown in exhibit 2-12. Now this is located as a picture at the bottom of page 2-24 in your workbook. So at this point you may want to pause and kind of type this information in and then you know catch up here in a few moments to do the formulas. So I'm in cell A4. I'm going to type in the word code. I'm going to press tab because remember what we learned the tab key will move you left to right enter key will move you downward there we go they're skipping row number five for some readability you don't have to do that if you don't want to I'm going to start entering uh, the part numbers here down column A <clears throat> I'm going to come over and up then put in the descriptions Notice the text is left aligned, the numbers are right aligned. That's the default of Excel. You can always change that through formatting if you want to. I'm going to motor over here to the cost per item. Notice we don't have any numeric formatting going on here. It's all general number. It's all very bare bones here in Unit 2. We'll get into some formatting in a later practice activity. But they want us to do the totals in column E, total costs, and I'm in cell E6 because that's where I want my first answer to go. We need to write a formula that multiplies the quantity in column C by the cost per item in column D. This is a basic formula and we learned in class that all formulas need to start with an equal sign. It's just a rule for formula writing within Microsoft Excel. So I'm in cell E6, I'm going to start with an equal sign. The quantity of 16 is located in cell C6 going to multiply that by the cost which is in cell D6. So I'm taking C6 multiplying it by D6. There are no spaces when you write these formulas. They don't have to be pretty. You don't have to capitalize the letter of the column but you do have to make sure the column letter comes before the row number. In other words you can't say 6C times 6D. Excel won't know what the heck you're talking about. So you have to say C6 times D6 in this particular case. Going to enter that. Move on to the next row which is row 7. Relative to row 7 I'm taking the value in in cell C7, multiplying it by the cost per item in cell D7. Now a little later we'll learn in, a, in an upcoming uh, practice unit how to fill that down so that we don't have to retype it for each row or each product in this case. But one more just for practice in cell E8, starting out with an equal sign, quantity of 5 is located in cell C8 and we're multiplying that by the cost per item which is $6 which is in cell D8. Enter that up. There you go. So this is step number three where it says in column E enter formulas to calculate the total cost for each item. Moving on to step number four, insert the picture file Outlander into the worksheet. Insert tab on the ribbon is where you need to go here. So the second tab located left to right just beside the home tab on the ribbon. Pull that insert tab forward. You're going to see there's a whole group here on this insert tab dedicated to illustrations. This is a picture file, a corporate logo that we already have on our computer. So we're not going out to the clip art gallery. We're going to click on the picture button. And in your student data folder, unit two, you're going to find two different pictures. The one that we're using for the practice activity is simply called Outlander. So you're going to want to select that picture file and choose Insert. 
Now, inserted pictures in Microsoft Excel do float on the top layer, so you have to be very careful about where you place this. You'll literally cover stuff up by accident. Don't do that. But this does require a little bit of resizing. So as we learned in class, you want to go to one of the corners, start pulling inward. That'll keep it in proportion. I'm just going to eyeball this. I'm not going to get crazy for exact measurements. You know, the book says approximately 1.65 inches wide. You know, whatever works for you. Once I get it resized, I'm going to drag it then up into the upper left-hand corner. There we go, looking pretty good. Step number six says, save the workbook as my total costs in the current unit folder. So I'm going to come up here. This file has never been saved before. So when I come up to the Office button and choose Save, it's going to take me into a Save As scenario because it knows, hey, you've never saved this before. It has me still in Unit 1, so what I'm going to do is uh, pop into Unit 2, because that's the unit that we're in in our textbook. And you'll notice at the bottom of the dialog box, the Save As type is an Excel workbook. In other words, this is being saved as an XLSX extension, uh, which means it is a 2007 to 2010 file which means if someone wants to open this in an earlier version of Microsoft Excel, they're going to have to download and install the converter for Microsoft.com. So that's no big deal, but we're going to take a look at something a little bit different here in a moment to kind of work around that uh, problem. Uh, I'm going to follow the book here. I'm going to name this uh, My Total Costs and click Save. Now. Following down to the next step on page 2-24, it says save the workbook as an Excel 97 to 2003 workbook with a slightly different name. In other words, when this is all said and done, you're going to have a My Total Cost workbook, which is a 2007 file format, and you're going to have a My Total Cost 97 file, which is a 97 to 2003 compatible format. So something to think about if you know the person that you're going to be corresponding with is in fact using an earlier version of Microsoft Excel might be a wise idea just to save it as this earlier uh, file extension up front before you start electronically corresponding with them. So going to come back up to the Office button, going to go into Save As, going to allow that submenu to pop out, going to choose Excel 97 to 2003 Workbook. And to differentiate this from the other file, I'm going to click at the end of the current name, hit the space bar, and put a 97 on the end of that. Click Save. I have two versions of this file now. One's a 2007 XLSX file called My Total Costs. And now I have another copy of it called My Total Cost 97, which is an XLS file, which is backward compatible through Excel 97.